your Drupal code using PHP stands so you can find bugs before your end users do, or if you're a tech lead, you put those juniors to work so they can fix their own stuff when you do the, before you even do your code review. I am Matt Glaman. I am the maintainer of PHP stand Drupal, or people are kind of more familiar with Drupal Check. So those are my things. You can find me on drupal.org as mglaman, Twitter is nmdmat, and my website's mglaman.dev. So first, what's PHP stand? PHP stand is PHP static analysis. So th it's actually just the letters of the word. So to find your bugs without writing your te without having to write tests or actually do the, like run it in a runtime. Um, so actually to go back real quick, static analysis is looking at the code before it runs. PHP is a it runs at runtime, right? It doesn't compile. Usually when something's compiled, it would fail. You could do the static analysis and that as part of the compiling. PHP, you don't compile PHP. It does at runtime, so you don't find bugs until it's on the web server and the bug smacks you in the face. PHP stand helps solve that problem. PHP Drupal or PHP stand Drupal is the extension to PHP stand to make it work with Drupal. And I'm gonna explain all the awesome things and how that works. There's also Drupal Check, which is a wrapper around PHP Stand and the PHP Stand Drupal config, because before, three years ago is when I first started this, it was um, kind of clumsy to put together. And like I said, speaking of, I think what first happened, it was debuted at DrupalCon Seattle, I think is when Dries did a video before, and he emailed me, he's like, this is a pain to set up. What if there was like Drupal Scan or Drupal Check? So that's where this was born out of. Um, and that was a big thing that helped us get over the hump to Drupal 9, is finding all the deprecated code in Drupal 8. But it does so much more than deprecated code. And so let's go ahead and go through like, like other tools. Because like, why do I need PHP stand? Why not just use linting? So you can do linting with PHP to catch syntax errors, right? This is usually the first bug you hit. It's a good pre-flight check. But you can see here, publi is not published. That's a typo. And you would have to actually be reading correctly, which you, I miss those things all the time in my code reviews. Linton doesn't catch typos, it catches syntax errors. You could try to use PHP Code Sniffer. PHP Code Sniffer tokenizes your, your code, so it breaks it into like little tokens and it scans them, but it does it individually by files, line by line, and has no context. So it doesn't know if is published as a method or not, or if it's even a typo, unless you wrote a specific rule that said catch typos on this word and all of that. So it's great for code styling, the code smell. It, it is a good pre-flight check, but is not static analysis true and through. Um, I want to mention Fan, 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 Fan. I don't know. Um, and Psalm, Fan is another static analysis tool that was created out of Etsy um, and requires the PHP AST extension. AST is abstract syntax tree. That's how you do static analysis. You break the lines of code into a syntax tree that makes it easier to parse and analyze. Um, this talk, I'm not going to go deep into that. If you want a slide on that, I can give you a link to one. I forgot to put it in the slide notes. Um, Psalm is another static analysis tool created by Vimeo. Um, the neat part about it, it does like taint analysis and a few other security items. So if you follow Sam Mortensen, he published a little integration that's he just quick did it to experiment, um, but that's where Psalm comes from. One reason that it's difficult to integrate with these other tools is that Drupal's auto-loading system is completely dynamic. We don't dump our namespaces and auto-loading to Composer like most PHP projects. So it doesn't just work out of the box like it should, or would, rather. Um, so let's go to PHP Sense. So it uses um, Nikita's PHP parser library. So it, it, there's a PHP library that creates the abstract syntax tree. You don't need an extension to run it. Um, it verifies calls the classes and methods that they exist. So here it would say, ha, is publi is not a method. You should go check your code to see why it's broken. Um, so it also has a system for defining the return types dynamically. And if we know Drupal, we, we're good at like, this might return an array or an integer based off you called another method, or it might return something else entirely. Um, by working, by integrating extensions, we fix that, and I'll talk about a few of those as I go on. So, what can PHP stand do for you? <laughs> All right. Um, shoot, I had the speaking notes that summarize this. There's nine levels of config. Um, nine is like going to the bottom layer of Hades. Um, zero just basically like does this run? Great. PHP stand doesn't crash, which is actually a, a big effort because if there's a syntax error or not even syntax error, but just something goofy, it will crash PHP stand. So it's like your first gate. 
Um, two is where to go because when you have level two, it like invalidates against like the PHP docs. If you, I run all of my projects at six, um, or actually no eight. I get to eight. Um, it is possible, but then it's getting really nitty gritty about your typing and all that. Um, just know like there's various config and kind of work your way up as you go. And it's like a nice win, right? If you're working on a project like we need to clean up our code, start at zero. Hey, no problems. Get to two. Oh, we hey, we, there's a bug we didn't know about. This is happening. In Drupal core right now, um, Drupal 10 has PHP stand at zero, it's running, and catching deprecations. And there's actually a bridge for Symphony 5 to 6. When Symphony 6 was committed, it broke the PHP, PHP stand build because we were doing a weird method check, like the a reverse method check um, with method exists. PHP stand was like, hey, you missed this, and it actually caught it after that patch was committed because of another issue that triggered the build. Um, due to the fact it takes about two minutes to run against Drupal core, they don't do it for every single patch because that would blow the DA's money uh, into the, the moon. Um, so it only runs in certain cases, but when it does, it's finding so many things. And like that's really cool um, and super exciting. So let's go back to that example code and analyze it with PHP stand, not live, of course. Um, this is at running at level two. So the idea is like, right, we have our hook, we have hook node insert. Um, and this is based off of, this example is loosely based on a bunch of support requests I have had to fill and people are like, why doesn't this work this way? Um, so as we can see that it says is public is not a method. It would say, you know, it doesn't exist on entity interface. Now it says entity interface because that's the parameter type hint for the, for the hook. So, um, Oh, I forgot to update. Is that supposed to actually say published? Is published? And be like, what do you mean it doesn't exist? Is published is the method. I know. I use it because it needs to be node interface. So it's inspecting. The is published method lives on entity published interface, not entity interface. So that, that method doesn't exist because it's not the right object. You fix that by fixing your argument parameter. And there's tricks that you can do in your code using if blah instance of class and then wrap it in there and that will... PHP send knows like, great, it's actually this object. There's things you can do to do correct typing. Um, I know some people like, but I like PHP because it's not types. I get it, but it just makes life easier and you know your code's gonna work and it's not like strictly typed like Java or Dart it's, or Go, it's just nice to have. Um, okay, so this is where I wanna bring up. The one case that happened is I get all these support requests that get revision author on node interface was deprecated and it didn't get caught by anybody's hooks because they did the default hook where they did hook blah entity interface node get revision author and work with the user return and then they got to Drupal 9 and like Matt you didn't catch my deprecations this is this is bull like um, but the problem is it got it lived on node interface was deprecated moved to a revision interface called and it's get revision user they didn't have their type hint so PHP stand just said it's an undefined method because everybody was only running deprecation checks. They weren't doing it with level two and deprecation checks. Um, it's been a very hard battle convincing people about static analysis, and I'm hoping that you see the benefit of using PHP stand beyond deprecation checks. So at least get it on level two with your deprecation checks and you will have a higher quality of life because you're not gonna be chasing bugs afterwards. We can all be productive, we can all be happy. So let's talk about PHP stand and some extensions. Again, PHP stand is the main tool, checks classes, um, detects incorrect namespacing. I wish I had this five years ago. So Boyan and I, when we were writing Commerce 2, um, we had, we both work on Macs and we had the wrong case in a namespace. Push it to Travis, broken. It took us, Boyan, Savanovich and I, three days to figure out why Travis was broken when it worked on a machine. Case sensitivity, insensitivity. PHP stand would have solved that in one minute. Um, function is this, PHP stand Drupal. I'm gonna go through the entire bit after that. Um, there's the PHP stand depre deprecation rules. This is what says, oh, hey, that method class, blah, 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 has at deprecated, grab the message and throw an error that you use something that was deprecated. This is the magic that you probably experienced when doing your D8 to D9 upgrade with Drupal check or PHP stand. Um, this, okay, yes, yeah, so like, but there is special sauce. And also the upgrade status module, um, if anybody has used that over Drupal check, that runs PHP send for you on your web server. Um, there's PHP send PHP unit. I use this because it 
helps me check my PHP unit classes. And if you do like self or this assert instance of, and you assert that a value is an instance of a class, PHP sends like, ah, okay, I got it. This value is actually this type. Um, so really cool. And then PHP is saying prophecy. So I'm all about mocking. I'm a test driven developer. Um, so I use prophecy to mock objects. This thing says, oh, it's not a double interface or whatever it's internally called. It actually knows that this is going to be a node that would be there or like and it, mocking entity storage, right? Mocking entity storage. It doesn't think that it's, it actually knows what it is. Um, so, because you're all developers, and I'm actually surprised there's not a lot of laptops up, because usually that's the case. Um, adding PHP Stand to your Drupal code base, I plugged this in early, because everybody's usually got an itch. Um, the key is PHP Stand Extension Installer. This is the magicalness that Drupal Check tried to solve. When you add it to your project, if you add a PHP Stand extension, it just registers it. Before you had to edit like your config file and say vendor slash blah 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 slash neon file, it was a mess. Um, so psst, this is a problem Drupal check tried to solve and get rid of Drupal check and just use PHP stand directly because then I have one less thing to maintain um, but it's completely fine it, Drupal check is nice because it's a zero dependency zero you don't have to do anything just that's one reason it's nice to just use PHP stand so composer required dash dash dev do it in your dev dependencies not your main dependencies because when you deploy to production you're all doing composer install dash dash no dev most people don't because they have to commit their vendor directory. Yeah. Um, so PHP stand, the extension installer, mglomin, PHP stand Drupal, and then the PHP stand deprecation rules. That will... I assume this is in your documentation on the website. Yes, and I will cover that too. Um, so yeah, so that's how you should add it, and that will add it to require dev so you don't ship it to production. Um, and then you could do PHP vendor bin analyze dash dash level two, your custom modules, and you're rolling. Now, here's how I do it. Um, commands are just a little bit bigger because I do the PHP, stand u the PHP unit and prophecy. And then PHP stand uses Neon files, which is from the Net framework. So that's another like PHP framework. Neon is like YAML, but it's more, it has more extensibility and yet another markup language. Yeah. Um, but parameters, you can specify your level automatically there. So that's where I just plug it in and I increment from there. And then you can specify paths. You can say, I want you to scan these paths. So then you just say, PHP stand do stuff. And it knows the level and it knows the um, paths. So let's do a time check real quick. Okay. So let's go about the magic, the sparkles. Let's bring the sparkles. Um, auto loading. This was the funnest part of it all. Um, I didn't give some of the backstory. So in 2018, December is when I was working on this. We had some product development we wanted to do at Centaro. For those who don't know, Centaro was formerly Commerce Guys. And we wanted to build this um, uh, toolbox that would like help do all these checks. And in my off time, I was like, PHP stand, static analysis. That sounds useful. So I started messing with this and realized that the auto loading is what broke. Um, is nobody knew what classes were in Drupal. Now, a lot of these tools do say you can point it to a directory and it's just going to glob up all the files and assume the namespace. That's what rec like Drupal Rector does that. It just says, hey, here's where you can auto load, but that actually breaks parallel processing and it has other bugs. I like to be a purist. So it actually mimics how Drupal does its auto loading and registers the namespaces. Um, so it does the yeah, PHP sense reports path based. I wanted to mimic the Drupal bootstrap process. Um, Drupal also has some legacy include fo files, and those have functions, and functions can't be auto-loaded. Although, I heard in like 8.3, or there is an RFC out to figure out how to do auto-loadable functions, which would be really cool to see. Um, so PHP stand Drupal registers all extension, extension namespaces, so even if you have some module that's not installed on your site, it's being considered. There's a feature request to find ways to do that. I had a brain blast at the airport on my way here. Maybe in about a month, we'll see it happen. It also loads like the hook includes. We've all seen views.ink, token.ink, pathauto.ink. It checks if the module has those, includes them so that way the function can be found. If we don't, you know, there might, it might be not be analyzed or actually PHP stand will say, this hook that I found in this file doesn't exist because it wasn't required into the system. Um, it also has Drush support too because modules have Drush commands and Drush, Drush has functions that need to be brought into scope. So that's, that's like honestly the biggest part of it um, that would allow you to then have 
all the magic work. The service container, this is also a really cool one. Um, so I don't know who here uses PHP Storm with the Symfony plugin and Symfony Drupal Bridge. If you're looking at me like, I don't know what that means, get it, please. Um, so what, it, what that, mod, that, that plugin does for PHP Storm is say entity type manager or entity underscore type ma dot manager. It knows that the service YAML maps to this class. That's what PHP Sand Drupal does. We have a global service map, so any rules or return types can say, hey, I encountered this service, go get the class. So now you can detect if you're using a deprecated method or a deprecated service. So whenever you do container get, when you have container injection interface and your factory, you're making your own class via the factory, hey, you're using deprecated entity manager. I'm sure everybody here is sick of the entity.manager deprecation. Um, and hopes that we never have such a, a large refactor again. It also works when you do the Drupal static class for service. Um, so it allows detecting deprecated methods. It does not error if you call an invalid service name. Um, that was done by choice because it does not handle dynamically registered um, services. So I don't know what to do there. Um, I would like to find a way to give a warning and have it be optional. Like, hey, we, didn't know, we don't know this thing exists. Or find a way to parse... Um, the service provider files that classes provide. So, not perfect, but it's as good as it can be. Um, this is a part in the past three months that's gotten a lot of love, is the entity integration. And let's face it, what do we work with most? Our data model, and that's the entity system. We have an entity mapping that says, given this entity type ID, it is this class. And based off the class, so notice how like for block, block content, it doesn't specify the storage. We do an inspection of that class and say, oh, it's a config entity or content entity. They didn't specify a storage, pick the default. So we do that for you. Um, and if we encounter an unknown entity type, it just falls back to the defaults. So this way, when you do entity type manager get storage node, you get back an instance of node storage class. And PHP sand can see if you're using incorrect methods. Um, what it also will do is fix, or if you do like entity storage load, um, create, it will give the correct information as well. Contrib can even define their own mappings. I have a merge request up for paragraphs. They're probably like, what? why is this? Because I just threw it up there without warning. Um, so like commerce, I was gonna add all the commerce entity mappings to PHP Sand Drupal. I'm like, I'm not gonna maintain that. But I have a, I put link in here for when I export the slides. It's on the readme of PHP Sand Drupal. So not only contrib, but for your own projects, right? I, 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 every project I work on, I have like three custom entity types. Um, so quick, I took some stuff from the test, so you can see here, any type manager gets storage, it returns the appropriate storage. It knows that's what's being used, which makes it even cooler when we get to do node storage create. It, right now, the create method, the default PHP doc says entity interface, which is like the most generic thing. It's not even a fieldable entity, it's just entity interface. Now it says you got a node, congratulations. If you do load or load on change, it's node maybe null, so when you're doing your inspections and you don't have if node is returned from the load, it's going to say, hey, that might be null and you might crash your system. So now you have better defensive programming to guard against crashes. So again, the thing isn't to be like over, like not to be like, ah, we have to scrutinize everything. It's defensive. You don't want to get a call. The website crashed. Get back on your computer and fix it. You want to stop that cycle. Um, and same with load multiple. So it returns that it's an array with the integer as the key and then the entity type. So you might see this more where there's array bracket and actually if you worked with any other language, you've probably seen that in templating and generics. Um, right now the Drupal coding standards fail when you have that in place. There's an open issue to fix that because it would fix a lot of the errors in Drupal itself when that was provided. Um, so entity queries, this is like this blew my mind somebody contributed this and i've spent the past like the first two and a half years of this thing with no one really contributing aside from like small fixes um when you do node storage get query it knows what kind of query you're doing are you doing a count query or actually returning entities and are the entities returned content entities or config entities um that last part matters a little bit because with how it fetches from the database the key is the identifier which will be an integer or a string so Content entities have integers for IDs, config strings. Um, so it actually returns the correct key. So if you said unset something, or I want to fetch the entity by ID from the return, 
um, PHP standard with error, now it understands. If you do a count query, it knows that you're going to get an integer back, which was always the biggest mess when you do execute and the default PHP doc is array or int. Well, that's so helpful. Um, but PHP stand actually fixes that. And I have it to do because there's a change that went into Drupal that I'm very upset about, um, but I'm going to make sure it gets fit, uh, detected, is you have to call access check on content entities now. Before, it was um, true by default. Now it has to be explicitly decided. Um, I think it's a horrible developer experience problem, so that's why I'm ranting on it a little bit. But I'm going to make sure PHP stand catches your entity queries and if they have been flagged or not. Um, so that way if you call execute and it has not been flagged with, with uh, access check, you'll get an error before your code breaks and you're like, why can't I debug this anymore? Um, and all that is kudos to um, Baram Benjamin Rambo, made sure to ask him for the proper pronunciation, um, for the major con contributions to the entity and dynamic return type. Internally, whenever we see git storage, we actually tell PHP stand it's a different type of object. And we have to do internal mapping because Drupal doesn't say, you know, this is a config storage type or it could be extended from. Um, so it's really awesome. Um, we have inspection for render arrays. This is cool. So I don't know if anybody got bit by the trusted callback interface or render callback interface when every, like, to bypass all the security concerns with getting injections into render arrays that call some closure or some other function and you get hacked, like all the Drupal get in stuff. Um, now your callback has to be a static method on a class or it could be in your class, but your class has to implement one of these interfaces. Um, so now if you do a pre-render, post-render, access callback or lazy builder, it finds it in your render arrays. It looks up the callable and tells you if it implements the interface or not. So that way you don't randomly get a break. And the cherry on top is, did you know that if you put a closure in a form array, it will kill your site? Because forms get serialized to the database. That's how Drupal works with form state, goes into the database. Uh, I, add, I added on top of here that if we see a closure, because a closure is allowed, it's not like the wrong thing to do, it's just wrong to do in a form. So it says, oh, I have a closure, am I in a form class? If I am, let them know that this form will break as soon as you click submit or do an AJAX operation. Um, loaded includes, this was contributed by Eric um, from Nine Media. So you know that good old module load include function, um, which is now deprecated and will be removed in Drupal 10, FYI. Or load includes from module handle, handler interface, it just gives you a chance to load another file, like a random file. Um, it verifies that the extension exists, so did you call a module that doesn't exist without checking it first? Um, it verifies that the file exists, so you called an invalid file. So if you're ever like, why can't my function be... I, I do this all the time, right? I write a plugin, I do something, I spend three hours wondering why it didn't load because I have a typo. So this would tell you that, hey, the file doesn't exist because you, you fingered up the, uh, the file name. And it also performs a require once to bring it into scope so that way its functions are made aware to PHP stand. So miscellaneous awesome, like it's included. So the class resolver, um, this is a service that I don't know how many people use or are aware of, but it's a nice little trick. If you don't want to define a service, but you've got like utility class that needs inject dependency injection, with a class resolver, and the one area that's used a lot in core is in workspaces. So what you do is you say get instance from definition, the class, and then it, built, it instantiates that class, so you can call it. The problem is, the, the doc block is returns object, right? It's not the actual class. So we have a, a return type extension that says, oh, you called get instance from definition. Does the class exist or not? And that way it's returned. So PHP system is like, I know what any to type build is or any to type alter is. Um, again, I've only seen this really used in Drupal core for a lot of the experimental modules. Things are moving fast because if you put something in services.yaml, it becomes a service and somebody's going to use it and now it becomes part of your API. So it's a way to bypass that backwards compatibility promise without making a service. Um, entity access results, this is a fun one too. I love Drupal's any, like, access results system. It's an object, it can be neutral, allowed, or forbidden. But for backwards compatibility, because we'd have to change a lot of code, by default all access checks return a boolean. Yes or no, because that's how Drupal 7 worked. Um, and the return type for access is access result interface or boolean. This checks if you get all the way down 
to say true that you want an access result object returned so that way you get the correct result. So if you assumed you'd be getting uh, one of the other in your code, it will warn you like, hey, you try to do a logic check against a class, it will always be true because it exists. Um, so that, that's, that's a nice find too, which means that better security. See, analyze your code, you fix bugs and you got secure code too. Um, extending at internal code, so there are items that are classes and you know you can just use them, but they're flagged at internal to be like, don't, please don't. Just, we have this here, don't use it. Um, but what it does is it checks across shared namespaces. So if something in Drupal core uses an internal class, we don't care. But if your module extends or references a class that is marked as internal from Drupal core, it's like you're using internal code, which then you have to go and choose to ignore that error, um, which was, it recently got fixed, but like content entity confirm form, yeah, the content entity confirm form was marked internal. And everybody started getting the errors when we added this. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that a form that you thought was stable wasn't, but that's fixed now. Um, which again, running PHP stand on Drupal core fixed a lot of these little quirks. So maybe it's still broken, quote unquote, for Drupal 9, but in Drupal 10, it won't throw an error. Um, so yeah, the second part of the namespace must match. And then back to, again, how to add. Just walk through it. Um, so what's on the horizon? Um, better tracking of change records to Drupal core. Um, because every year, well not every year, but now for the second time in a row, right? Second, this is only the second time we've done this, right? Yeah. Um, digging up all the old change records to figure out what changed in core, are we catching all the analysis? You know, I do contribute to Drupal Rector and it's just like, what code do we have to fix? Because there isn't, we have the change records with each time that there's a breaking change, but we don't report it and say, Upgrade status needs to check because Drupal 10 requires JSON support in the database. You can't statically an analyze your database. So that's where upgrade status is stateful and finds those checks. Um, but what about where, like, oh, when creating a plugin and passing the context key isn't used anymore. There's a runtime error, but who's, how are you gonna know that? That can be added to PHP stand as a rule. Um, we did it for config entity annotations before, but just finding a way to track change records and create an issue queue of change records to make sure that yes, an issue is open for PHP stand Drupal, an issue is open for Rector. Um, catch has started to open them. Um, XGM and Catch, we had a quick conversation in Drupal Slack. They're, they're just adding everything to the Rector queue and then I'm gonna help triage it from there to say, because here, because the main goal is PHP stand analyzes your code. It tells you what's wrong. Rector fixes things it knows about. So that's the other part. Rector does not just say, oh, it's deprecated, I'm gonna fix it. No, you have to write code. It's like a code sniff, right? You have to t you have to explain how to read the code and how to replace the code object. Um, so that's why we're just putting them all into the rector queue because that is the big part is just making sure they get fixed. And through that, we can say, oh, let's do the static analysis checks. Um, better support for entity fields and field properties. I didn't get time to update it, but I'm excited. I created stubs. So now when you do, let's say that you do like entity get field and the field's a link field and you do first so you get the first instance and that's a link item class if you were to do field link arrow title before it would say that's an un like that's the property that doesn't exist yada 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 now it works so properties on core field types will be returned um and then that kind of leads to a drush command so i recently wrote a blog post your third party libraries can provide drush commands now there's no, before you had to like hardwire it and it was a mess or be a Drush extension. So I think I'm gonna provide a Drush command that you can run against your Drupal site when it has a database and dump your entity mapping and field information so we can consume it and say, hey, you got field link from this entity and we believe it's this bundle. It's actually this field list item class which has these field items in it and have full analysis of your code base. Um, that's, I'm excited about that. And then any of your suggestions, like, right, like you run it and it's not catching things, let me know. Um, I'm totally open to it. There are starting to be more contributors, so it's not just me. Um, yeah, so as it goes through, just open issues all the time, or I just open the PHP stand channel on Drupal Slack. So there's there, there's a channel there, you know, we already had one question that got turned into docs. So 
PHP Stand made this decision. It's a good defensive programming one, but whenever you do new static, I'm sure we've seen it in like the create methods or wherever else, it's new static arguments. And that ensures when you extend the class that the child gets the correct instance. PHP Stand says that's bad and you can't unset that rule, which in reality it is bad. When you're writing your client code, don't do that. Use final classes, new self, harden your code, be strict about your APIs. But when you're Drupal core or a contrib, we're about being open, right? We're about having fluid code and letting people get wild with it. So you do have to ignore that error that's now in the docs. So that way if you get sick of seeing that because you're a contrib developer or something else, you can ignore it. I did set up the GitHub bot to notify of releases. So if you don't use libraries.io or any other service that pings you when there's a new um, release, it will get dropped in there. And I make sure that every code goes through a pull request so you can use GitHub's automated release notes. So that way it's nice and pretty. And I try to highlight the big changes. Um, so as I said, docs, I didn't, there were no docs before because I didn't know where to put them. And the wiki feature on GitHub is unbearable because only the project owner or anybody that has full access can edit it. So Drupal.org. Uh, finally, I had the idea to put it on Drupal.org. So it's docs, develop, development tools, PHP stand. It has the commands for installing. So that's where the install commands are located. Um, it talks about how I brought up like, oh, it can't find a method that's supposed to exist. It says fix your typing. And then also um, just any of the edge cases like a usage of unsafe new static or some other quirk about PHP stand that we just can't fix or is just Drupal and PHP stand just collide and we can't resolve it, it'll be in the docs. And the docs on Drupal.org can be edited by anybody and contributed. So if you want to contribute to PHP stand Drupal, like the huge thing is documentation. It's, it's new to Drupal, right? P static analysis is new to the Drupal community. Yes, people have been doing it, I'm sure, but it's, it's becoming more popular and it's reaching more masses and documentation can help the, the poor junior developer who's never done it and then was told get PHP stand running and they may not have assistance the docs could help them so that's a way great way to help contribute and help other developers PHP stand.org has a, um, a bunch of documentation for PHP stand itself and it has a playground so if you're doing like random PHP code you can actually give PHP code to it and it will find errors for you now Mocking Drupal stuff in that sandbox is nearly impossible. I tried to do that because the link item test in Drupal core does a bunch of our magical getters and setters and crashes PHP stand. And I can't figure out why. Um, and then of course the repos at PHP stand Drupal on MGLOM and PHP stand Drupal. And I forgot to put it in here, but I do live development streams. That's how I get PHP stand Drupal developed. Um, last year on this time when the Drupal 9 stuff was really kicking off, um, like it was overwhelming because there's all these agencies, right? Agencies like we need to upgrade our Drupal 8 and 9 sites. Matt, when's this? And I was like, I'm not doing it. And I threatened to shut it down. But that's not going to happen anymore because I found a healthy way to contribute to it. So one, if you're an open source maintainer, make sure you manage that health part of it. Like manage your, your, your mental health. And my way of doing it is like, all right, I want to work on this. I enjoy it. So I started, I went on Twitch. And Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Central, so 3 Eastern, for two hours a week, I work on PHP Stand Drupal. And that's way, my way of pushing it forward, enjoying what I do. Um, so you're welcome to tune in if you want, or at least now you know it has a stable development cycle. And usually I get a good feature release. So I do weekly releases about. So I'll do that stream, get something really cool landed, tag a release. Um, so that's that. And... Yeah, that's the end of the slide. So thanks for coming, and I'm, I can take any questions now, if there are any. Yeah, so I use upgrade status a lot. So what level does upgrade status use by default? Like, I've never noticed if I can set it in upgrade status. Or it, okay. Upgrade status, so what upgrade status runs at config zero. So the question was, what does upgrade status do? Like, what level does it run PHP stand at? It runs it at level zero, so that way the only thing that runs are the rules from the deprecation rules package. I wish we could bump it up to two, but it's gonna find so many other arbitrary things that it would probably be bad. Um, An upgrade status actually, like it injects dynamic code just like Drupal check does. So it's, it's hard coded. It'd be interesting to make it a uh, user interface item because we do need level two. We need to see that 
this method is undefined. Oh, it's undefined. Well, you need to fix the typing so that way it can find it, and then you know it's deprecated. There's, there's gaps. Um, it's just if we did it on two, people would see a lot of things they have to fix, and I think at least making it an option. That would be good than default. I have another question, too. Yeah. So Make sure you remind me about that, though, so I can write it down. Okay. So as far as, like, the cadence of, like, when you're developing, like, what do you recommend? Like, how often should you run the analysis? Do you run it, like, right before you commit, or do you run it as you go, or, like, what's the um, cadence? I do all of the above, and CI. So I have it as part of my... So the question is, how often should you run this? Sure. And there's four answers to that, actually, I think. So PHP stand lets you generate a baseline of all your errors, right? When you first throw this at the site, you're not going to fix every error, so you can generate a baseline and choose what you're going to fix. So that's step one. Get it in. If you see, like, a five-mile-long list, generate the baseline, go to the phpstand.org docs, and generate your baseline, and then whittle it away. I run it randomly when developing, so that way I, I write some code. Like, again, I do test-driven development. So I write the test, then I start to write the code, Tests are green, run PHP stand. Once I get my test green, PHP stand, refactor the code to make it prettier, run the test. If they're, if they're red, fix code, get it green, PHP stand. That's kind of my flow. Um, and then also, for some projects, I do on pre-commit. So I have a commit hook to run it. PHP stand the first time might take a while, but it does cache. So if a file has the same hash, it will just say, great, it hasn't changed. The symbols are the same, la di da um, which is why it takes so long to run on Drupal.org, because it doesn't reuse its cache. It has to make it every single time. Um, so yeah, pre-commit and then CI. That's like, what I, in my ideal workflow, the first thing it runs is PHP lint, and then PHP stand. Or PHP lint, code sniffer, PHP stand, and then test. Like, I don't even let my test run until those gates pass um, as part of it. And if... Oh, I should have got a screenshot. I'm pretty sure when you when you run it and there's errors, if you use GitHub, it integrates with GitHub Actions, so it shows up in your code too. As as I like, not comments, but it, yeah. it's a new thing GitHub did where they can actually show error messages in line with where they occur. So PHP stand does that out of the box. I'm pretty sure it does it with GitLab too. Like it outputs stuff based on the CI environment to match the reporting. Any other questions? Yeah. On the on the topic of CI, like yeah. How long does it take to execute, even if it has access to cache, and like, does increasing the levels it's checking for drastically change the runtime? Yeah, so the question is, how long does it take to run in your CI? Increasing the levels does not increase the time, because I did some performance using Blackfire to try to make PHP stand Drupal faster. What takes long, the longest is building the abstract syntax tree, and the, actually, no, it's not even that, it's the reflection. And when I say long time, I mean it ran, like let's say like t it made like 10 million calls to pregmatch match and that took like seven seconds right so increasing the level does not increase the time i guess it does somewhat because you're running more rules which means it's doing more processing but that's minimal in regard to the fact that it has to go and inspect the files and build like the the mappings um so if you do reuse the cache it's quick i think we're talking seconds a lot of times um it there, there is a um, five second boot cost that I can't get rid of because we have to parse all the YAML files and parsing 136 YAML files for the services.yaml so if you have a lot of services.yaml which is one reason I want to scope the extensions we don't need to parse all the services.yaml files for every single test module that exists in Drupal core but there's no good way to exclude them right now and in Drupal core we should but for your client site, you don't care. You care about what your state is. So if I can get that down, that five seconds could probably go to one. And I know that doesn't seem a lot, but like that's that's huge. Yeah. When you're talking percentages, that's a huge decrease. But main question in CI, it's probably like it'll take you like half a minute at the length, unless you've got like a really, 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 really big code base. And increasing the rule levels shouldn't bump that up. Sounds like it's small enough to be one of the jobs that gets run on like every commit almost. Yeah, yeah. I, I and I it's think it should be yeah, on every commit. Definitely one on every commit because like I said, if you're a team lead and you have to review pull requests all day, you miss things. You're looking at the big architecture problems and reading the code. You're probably not running it locally because nobody has not everybody has the time to like take that kind of review into each pull request. You, like, that's what I do, right? I read the code, like, ah, throw it back. Okay, this. 
PHP send is my guard for those little things that I miss in developer fatigue from misspellings or, you know, oh, this, this logic statement looks good, but PHP send would say, actually, that object is always a class. So if you did if thing, that's always true. Um, and when you get to the higher levels, it, it becomes very helpful with logic checks. It'd be like, you know, you're doing if on blah, make sure you convert it to like an actual Boolean item. So now if you end up looking at like well, my code, when I have an array, one, I really hate using empty and not empty. That has been like my one thing about Drupal that has like bugged me since way, way back. But now I do count on the array equals zero or is greater than. And I, I moved to some of these other items to be more explicit in my code, which is actually helpful. Like, do you care if it's not empty or do you care if there's a certain count? Because I've seen that it's like not empty and then get the first item. What if there is three? Is that bad? If there's three items, what happens? Like, how did we get there? So if count, throw exceptions. A lot of things like that is what PHP sent has made me do. Um, yeah. Anything else? Long time listener, big fan. Uh, <laughs> wondering if you, so <laughs> have you added this on projects where you have like more junior developers working alongside? Like, what does that experience look like? So the question is having this alongside junior developers on my projects, right? Yeah. This is like, you have to. <laughs> this is my saving grace. Um, one, because I can focus on the best pull request. I can focus on what matters with the pull request, and that's the architecture review, building them as a better developer. You know, like I recently, I just joined Occupants two months ago, and we had to talk about career planning. It's like, I love where I'm at in my career. I'm a principal software engineer. I help build amazing things and grow junior developers to be amazing engineers. So PHP Stand is one of those tools because it has good practices built into it that it analyzes. Now, there's something to say that when you use tools and it asserts a way to program, that can lead to bad things because then you kind of have like one way of doing things. But it's not that opinionated. But it does enforce defensive programming, which makes the junior deliver better work. So they're not going back to fix their work when it crashes in production or making We've all been there as somebody who's a lead. You don't mean to be frustrated, but you're like, mm. and then you don't want to negatively impact them. Like you want to be there to help them grow. So the tools, they take the emotion out of it too, right? You know, time zones, we all work in different time zones and you do a pull request and it's like, oh, you, all these nits, right? Like fix this, fix this, fix this. You're not synchronous doing it. So then they're going to read it when it's a tool. You didn't do it. The tool told you to do it. So it helps take that emotional disconnect too. Do you find that like, developers are quick to fix things based off of the output, or does it usually take some effort? It, it, I'd say it's quick, because it is quick to run. Now, the problem is if you don't have like a full pipeline where it runs, it fails fast, then it takes a while, because they might like, well, i got to wait for everything to finish before I know if there was an error. Case in point, Travis CI, right? Travis CI ran all your stuff, and then at the end told you everything that failed. But like GitHub Actions, um, so it calls CI, GitLab, the, when the first thing fails, it'll kill the build. So also fast response time, right? Push within two minutes, that should be booted and they can see what's wrong. They're not idle, waiting for a build to finish too. And it, yeah. Um, so currently static analysis is like not part of my development workflow, but this presentation has convinced me that it should be and that I should start with PHP stands. But I'm wondering if you can recommend any other static analysis tools that like complement PHP yeah. stand or maybe cover the areas that it doesn't do so well? Yeah. So the question is, what are the other tools to add to the tool belt? Like, right, don't do static analysis now, but like, let's get on the static analysis train. Um, so there's PHP stand for the static analysis. I brought up fan and Psalm, but they don't work with Drupal yet. But there's PHP MD mess detector. And I'm on the fence about it. I like it, but it, it's, there's things. Um, basically, it'll say this function is too complex. Or, hey, or there's like, it'll say it's too complex, it's hard to read, it does some really cool analysis that way. Um, there's PHP LLC, like for lines of code, and it analyzes the line of code. You know, these are like, some of these things are like vanity metrics. It says like this class is too big, like, sorry, it has to be 2,000 lines. I can't, I'm not going to break it up into three classes to make it meet the metric. Um, but they, they help, they're like the safeguards, right? So PHP LLC, PHP MD, um, there's like PHP paste detector. There's some way to tell if you did something like three times. Now, there's the whole argument about dry um, or whatever it is, like don't repeat, yeah, don't repeat yourself. 
Again, another tangent of mine, I will only refactor something if I use it three times. This whole two times and refactor stuff, out the window. It's unproductive. Um, I'm a very opinionated person. <laughs> um, I'm open to ideas, but like that, like I like think I don't want to. I like to be productive, and those things refactor too much. But yeah, pay, like copy detection, mess detector, lines of code. You know, even running PHP L against all the files. Oh, PHP linter. There's a package called PHP linter which will automate running PHP L because otherwise you'd have to find every file and pass it to the argument or individually. Um, there's a lot. There, there's a good handful of them. And what I should bring up, I don't use it because it bundles too much. Look at Grump PHP. It might be Grum PHP actually. So G R U M P H P, and it bundles all these QA tools, all these tools into one. And I'm pretty sure you just write like a Grum PHP .yaml file or .php, and that's how you configure all the tools to run. So you don't need to go alone. You can use a tool. The problem is you're using a tool to abstract away the tools which adds another layer but if you're getting started it's great right like that's everything i'm sure you've learned in drupal views is amazing and then you get to the point like i am hitting all the roadblocks with views i'm going to go straight to code for my career it's it's one of those learning learning processes does, um, does uh Grum PHP include php standards for that bundle i don't know i think so it might i i know that that's becoming like a big de facto um my friend used to work at gravity works one of the sponsors and that was one of the things he put in place like Again, with the juniors, he went in and he was like, like the, becoming like one of the main Drupal people. He's like, we're slapping this in and we're not merging any PR so it passes. So again, it's a great way to get booted up. And if you decide that you're hitting roadblocks, spin out the tools into their own thing. Thank you. Yeah. I think we got, how long is this going to? I, I think we're at time actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're oh, thank you for coming. I'm gonna stop the red button and I'll hang out and take any other questions. Well, there's, there's Fantastic logo. What, what, what logo? Oh, I know. Well, that I didn't create, but that is amazing. And I'm really upset because I bought one of the shirts and it's still being delivered from Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you so, $5 more no, I mean, he shipped it out. Yeah, it's like I, I was hoping to wear that shirt while I was here. But. Go to Prague.